being recorded and it's possible or will be aired on the YouTube channel for the town of Amherst. So let me bring up the, um, Alex, do you have the agenda in front of you so that you can read that statement? I am attempting to pull it up. I'm a little slow here. All right. Okay. All right, so today is the, oh, the only one I have is for December 18th. Hmm. I can share screen. I just need you to read yeah, the statement that's on that. Okay. Off to a flying start. Hmm. Your video not on. I thought it was. You said I was a video. Right. Yeah. Oh, video. Oh. With the extension of chapter 20, of the acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to accept, access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. See instructions below. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. And so if you just um, can review the agenda, that would be great. All right. Um, so the first thing is uh, the call to order. Um, and we'll move on to uh, reports and comments. And then uh, action and discussion items, including building maintenance, building updates, building reservations. Uh, we'll set an, a date for the next meeting. Um, and then... Um, reserve a little bit of time, hopefully, for, for any other topics uh, that we didn't reasonably anticipate 40 hours, 48 hours in advance of the meeting. Then we'll adjourn. Thank you. And if you could just um, tell us the time that this meeting is starting. Yep. Uh, this meeting is starting at 9.04 a.m. Great. So I just wanted to let folks know that the librarian Petra is unable to attend today's meeting. She was hoping that she would be able to come so that you guys could, um, you know, discuss with her any concerns. But I'm going to now ask Alex if you want to open it up for public comments. Yeah, let's open it up to public comment. Do we have anyone in the uh, queue here? Yes, we do. And I'm gonna move them in. It's Maria Kropicki. Hi, Maria. Hey there. Thanks. Um, thanks for the public comment. And um, I really don't have anything um to add. Uh, I just want to uh, uh, to. I'm I'm happy about your agenda, <laughs> is what I want to say. And um, I just want to appreciate the the site visit that you guys had, and that Jeremiah is here. So I'm just always uh really interested in, in the building improvement so thank you guys for continuing to follow up on that that's all thank you thank you for joining us maria there any other no no nope. okay so um next would be like trustees reports which are usually if uh any of the three of you have any comments or announcements that you have that are outside of the items that are on the agenda. I just wanted to thank everybody, um, Jennifer and, and Jeremiah, especially for, for putting together that tour. Um, was it two weeks ago? Um, that was very helpful. I'm grateful for you taking the time to do so. So the first um, action item, I know because now you can't see the agenda, is the building maintenance. So. We can start there. Um, and based off of the tour, Jeremiah, do you have any updates or do um, any of the trustees have any questions about the maintenance? If there's no questions, I can jump in. That'd be great, okay. thanks, Jeremiah. So uh, just took a care, care of a couple small items uh, for the library staff that they've asked me to. Um, uh, we, we took down a door so that there's uh, greater visibility and access to one of the shelves 
up in the main library. Um, it's it's not a it's not a rated door, so um, it can easily come down. Um, we removed some of our uh, uh, COVID safety measures just so it, the uh, interactions between our patrons and, and the library staff is more intimate. Um, um, some stuff that's on the horizon, horizon uh, the director of uh, sustainability for the town, uh, Stephanie Ciccarello and I are looking at applying to a green communities carbon car decarbonization grant. Um, it's uh, a grant for $500,000. Um, and what that would do is allow us to uh, really push our, our efforts um, to make the Munson Library um, a, a, a non-fossil fuel building. Um, so we do have some, some funding um, already in our capital, um, but, but I think the decarbonization is, is a great way to take care of all of our weatherization needs as well as the mechanical side of things. Um, so it's, there are applications typically in fall and spring and fall. I don't anticipate us, uh, getting that application in for this, fall, uh, spring, but, um, I would imagine that we would try to, um, get it in for the fall. It does require a lot of data collection as far as utilities, having energy audits, having some sort of engineering study. So there's a lot of pieces that, that are needed uh, in order to apply for that. Um, I have recently- uh, yes. May I ask a question? Um, who is that grant opportunity through? It's through the green communities. Green communities, okay. Yes. Is that a- private organization a state it's, organization it's it's state yeah 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 um last week i received some equipment for building access controls for the building uh, that will help us with um have patrons uh entering exiting so if people are renting the hall and try to make things a little bit more seamless a little bit easier uh so there will be uh uh, badge access, keypad access, and, and certain doors that allow us to program the doors uh, for the, the library schedule. So they'll automatically unlock and relock uh, for that schedule. Uh, and I think the last thing I got going on right now is replacing the, uh, the, the, the water bubbler downstairs with a bottle fill station. Um, so that equipment is in and now it'll just be getting a, a plumbing contractor to do the install. And I think that's it for me. Um, can I, ask, I have a quick question. Um, I apologize for missing. I really wanted to have the tour and it didn't work out for me that day, but, um, and maybe this has been talked about, but who takes, is the outside of the building, like the grounds, I know the town takes care of that, but the area between like the libraries on the um, south side between the library and the church is a mess and it's full of bad weeds. There's um, things are climbing up the maple, killing the maple. It's got old facithia bushes and rose bushes. Can that be dealt with? Can that just be plowed up and seeded over and just taken out of there? Because it is a mess. Yes, and and you know my staff and I talk about that, and we we were talking about it even this past um, summer and fall, and it it really has uh, just gone out of control with growth. And there's you know there there is some nice shrubbery over there, but then there's some other sort of nonsense trees and weeds kind of grow, like you say growing out of it. So it really needs to be trimmed and pushed back and and cleaned up and that that is definitely on on something that we're going to take care of this spring okay um when you i mean i know you put but my worry is everything just gets cut down with a brush hog or something and it's just gonna all grow back 
that's my 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 <laughs> thought. Um, as typical often with the town is like shrubs and stuff just get all turned one way, and and in a couple of years we'll have the mess back again. So I'm I'm just hoping it's done correctly. Yeah, we we'll, we will do our best to to make it right. Okay. And I would just say for the outside, I'm not sure if Claudia O'Brien is still coming over to the Munson and taking care of the flowers and the gardening in the front. No, he doesn't. Um, it's done by a woman, Mary Dunn, myself, and um, and a woman, I don't know her last name, it's Annabelle. The three of us have been doing it, and Mary does most of it. Okay, great. Um, and Jeremiah, is there any updates? So this is kind of like building updates on the uh, door that's facing the church, the renovation of that? Yeah, so um, in the building tour, I, I spoke about um, uh, an application that we sent into um, the Massachusetts Office of Disabilities, the MOD. They had a grant. Um, there's grant opportunities every year, and we did apply for for that grant to redo that that entryway, and um, uh, and 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 add some a walkway uh, over to that door. Unfortunately, we did receive uh, some uh, notification that we our application was not accepted. Um, so. It, it is a disappointment, uh, and I do believe that we have um, a lot of town support for that project. So what we'll probably do is look to see uh, other avenues to get that work done. Um, so whether it be through through grant grant money or capital, uh, we're, we're going to still try to, to, to get that project taken care of. Um, if it's not this year, then we'll certainly try to apply for those grants again and, and get it taken care of as soon as we can. Maybe I think it would be a, a, a great asset to the building. To uh. clarify here, so we're, the door facing the church is not the one that people use right now, right? Correct. Um, but that is the one that you were talking about installing the badge entry? Y yeah, if we can if we can make that a suitable entrance for... Right. Uh, patrons to use yeah because we're still yeah. having a problem with the door that people do currently use to get into the hall yep yeah i have all the equipment to to for that door the main door to the library the staff side door and the back door so it, it's just i i didn't include that side door because um it, if it were if, if it that equipment would be included into that project mm. um Mm -hmm. And going back to what Susan asked about the, the garden or the outdoor area, are there, um, you know, local groups that we could work with maybe to replace some of what's there with native plants? Or, I mean, I know we'll need a walkway area, of course, but like to let some of the lawn go to meadow or take out, um, I mean, certainly deal with if there's like an invasive vine that's killing a tree, we should certainly deal with that. But um there's just so many groups around and I wonder if we could partner with them to help take care of that in a, you know, thoughtful way. Yeah, certainly. Uh, I think uh, a good resource would be to uh, bring in Alan Snow. He's our uh, tree and grounds uh, warden. And, and I would, I would imagine that he probably has some good connections in the community and he could, he could, lend his expertise on that. Do you have a timeline for the switch of the main door in the meantime? No. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't. I, I, I started talking with IT um, at the end of last week, just letting them know. Um, so we need to coordinate because they need to do some uh, uh, programming on their end and I need to figure out how to run wires through that old building. <laughs> so it, it will take a little bit of uh, investigation. Um, 
uh, hope, hope I'm hoping that it, it's not too long and that it's bringing an electrical contractor to help run wires and setting it up. So unfortunately it will take a little bit of time. No worries. Thank you. Um, so does anybody have any other questions? And I'm only just saying this, Alex, because you can't see the agenda or I, last time you couldn't see oh, the agenda. I, yeah, no, I can see it now. All right. Yeah. So you want to take so it over I, now? I, I did want, have one other uh, uh, comment just about, you know, um, building maintenance and updates. Um, I'd, I'd like to keep the, the door um, project kind of as a standing agenda item. So I, I definitely would like to see that some progress there. I know these things take time, but I feel like this is something we've been talking about for several years now. And I, I know that it'll once installed, it's really gonna help with the reservation process as well and, and managing um, use of buildings. So I think it's pretty pretty important that we, we keep on top of that. Um, I think that brings us what, through building updates and maintenance. So we're now we're talking about reservations. Yeah, just quickly, when you say the door project update, are you talking about that door facing the church or just the doors in general? Because both of those. Uh, you know, I, I think we, sh we should keep all the doors in general. Um, <laughs> you know, the ADA thing being being pretty. Pretty high, but, I, you know, I think I think getting the cards working on the doors that we're currently using, I think, is, is priority one and, and, you know, at least something we should continue to discuss. And a right. quick question about that system when it is up and running. Um, if it fails, what is the backup? Like, how do you get in? Work? Will keys still work? Uh, yep. Yeah, a key a key will still work. Um, so that'll just require so, someone to come down and key into the building. Yeah. Thanks. All right, I think that moves us on to building reservations. Yeah, so the Munson is heavily used. That's, you know, the folks, um, there's a reservation in there almost every day. The weekends are pretty much booked up for the next three months. So um, it's used heavily. I haven't heard any complaints about anything except for possibly the door. Um, and I think that was very similar to like, if somebody brushes up against it, it, it that it locks somehow. And I'm not, I think it was Jeremiah that says if people brush it like up against it, it locks it somehow or the Allen wrench falls out or something happens. But outside of that, and then outside of the yoga group, I think that they've gotten all situated. They have a place to store their items and um, Jeremiah has put the lockbox back up for them. So I think that they're good. The yoga group had also asked about um, the outtake vent, I think, being uh -huh. really full of dust. Um, do we know if that's been addressed? I, I don't believe it has, not yet, but I will be sure to have that uh, scheduled for this evening. Thanks, Jenny. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. There's unless you guys have questions about reservations. I think maybe once we change the, I I still think keeping the. I don't know what you guys want to do about the fee structure. Basically, is what I'm thinking about if you want to keep it as is. Um, for the most part, people are okay with the way that the fee structure runs. There's occasionally the folks who you know feel like. It should be more of a free space just because right now we've got the Jones Library that's no longer taking reservations and then folks are looking for places, but they weren't being charged and now they are being charged. And so I think that that is a little bit of a problem for some folks because a lot of the programming is not necessarily, it's not for profit. It's, you know, there's like a teacher from a school that does a book club with some of the kids and then there's, um, you know, just local organize, organizers that just want to have their group meet again. So. So Jones didn't have a fee at all? Jones doesn't well, charge a fee. 
the bangs doesn't charge a fee either, except for the, the fact that it's not available on the weekends because there's no facilities here. And so I think part of the reason why the Munson charges a fee, and Jeremiah, you can correct me if I'm wrong, is there is no facilities at Munson right now. And so there has to be a way to offset that. But I have a quick question. When they reserve that space, do they reserve the downstairs also? Is it all included? No, no someone else. Usually there's only one group. Usually groups either reserve the hall or the, just, the downstairs, the meeting well, space. Asking, because I have been there f for several things, and I thought the, up the upstairs is mostly the, definitely the main feature or whatever, but people were going downstairs and using that too, and I just wondered if that was um, supposed to be happening or if it was included or whatever. So there is one, there are two groups that have been using the Munson for many, many years, and they've always used both spaces, um, but usually there's a additional, there's a charge for both spaces for newer folks. You know, okay. we'll say that those two people have been grandfathered. I think one gentleman does recitals and the other one is a summer camp. Yeah, yeah. okay. So do you guys have other questions about reservation? Nope. You know, just what I think just so everyone um, is familiar with, with the process, I'm, I'm on the amherstmask.gov website. And I guess the process, Jennifer, is, is folks email you for availability and you let them well, know if, what the structure is. So. I mean, in theory, that is kind of how it is. But what ends up usually happening is somebody calls the, the library themselves and speaks to librarian, and then they refer them to me. I, and so I typically tell them if it's available, but there is an online form under the Munson Library that they complete, and then we move forward from there. And I'm just, I ask because I wonder if the, the key card system i imagine there's some sort of scheduler as part of that i'm just wondering if some of that process of scheduling might be automated a little bit with the with the card reader yeah i leave that one for jeremiah yeah um this is potentially yes you 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 could if if it was um something that happened say every Saturday from noon to two, um, that would be easy enough to, to schedule. Uh, but if it's, if, if it's more randomized, that's a little bit more of a challenge. Um, what, we, what we are looking at doing is uh, including uh, a, key, the, a keypad and um, reader it's it's one single device, and what's what we're able to do is to give uh, unique codes to groups that might be like one-off groups, and then they can use that that one-off code. So it's it's considered a one-shot code. So they're able to get in, use it for their day, and and then it um, and then it won't work after that. Um, as far as booking and reservations, that is something that that I know the town and, and I don't I don't want to um, you know uh, uh, be too telling I, I suppose just because it's very in, in the works. Uh, but but we are looking into you know are there options through our OpenGov uh, software where we're able to to. Uh, receive those those online um, fees and and have uh, individuals fill out the forms, but it's something that we're we're using for our inspections and some of our other departments within town. And so, if 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 it's possible, um, that that's something that we are trying to look into you know, to help. Great, thanks, Jeremiah. Right, and I think that that would include the North Amherst Library too, because right now the community is very adamant about trying to reserve that space. 
and there's yeah there's no system put up right now currently for that so i don't think the space is available either so that messaging would be good to get out as well um but i think amherst rec probably has the most similar thing now where they have for the two pavilions when you can reserve them online and pay for it online so i would think something similar to that yeah i think i i, I from from my understanding is the uh, that sort of look at, that deeper look into open gov is to assist with recreation um so you can you can sort of book those pavilions fields and whatnot so you know, I, I keep sort of advocating for the libraries and going, you know, it'd be great if once we have that, you can expand it across things like the libraries and, the, you know, the. <laughs> I would second that, um, yeah. you know, <laughs> it is a part time job months and there's I honestly, there's very few days that go by that I don't receive inquiry or reservation requests for the months in. So. It's a high demand use build space. And like since we've been in this meeting, I've had two emails about inquiries about the months. <laughs> so I spend quite an amount of time between that and getting checks and cashing them and shredding key deposits and handing out keys. So yeah. And so uh yeah, that's it for reservations, unless you guys have other questions. Any other questions? No. All right. So that brings us to the next meeting date. There's uh, the matter of when we're required to meet next versus when we'd like to meet next um, to stay on top of some of these things. Um, I'd like to propose maybe meeting in another six to eight weeks from now. Jeremiah, Sounds would six to eight weeks give us appropriate time to get updates on some of these items? Yeah, okay. Are you looking at the first week in April or last week in March? All right, why don't we say the first week of April? Let's get past that April Fool's Day mark there. So yeah, uh, I guess so we're looking at the week of April 1st then. Is that, is that a, uh, I don't, I haven't checked my kids' children's calendar. I'm not sure if that's a vacation time or if anyone's planning any. School vacation further on in April. Yeah. Let's say it's the third week maybe in April. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Muted. School vacation week starts the 15th of April, the Marathon Monday. On Friday, the 5th is pre-K to 12 early release. Okay. But, but that's the only school thing that we... Okay. All right. So, Jennifer, would you mind putting out a poll for that week? Unless you want to... If everyone just wants to look at our calendar right now, we could just look right now and pick a date and time. I mean, Which it I'm... seems like Mondays at nine seem to work for people's schedules. So I don't know if Monday the first at nine works for everyone. Uh, that would work for me. That's fine. That's fine with me. Okay. So we'll go ahead and say Monday, April 1st. And then in the meantime, I would think about, I know at one point we were thinking about trying to do something to yes. bring awareness and community to the months in. So that's something you guys can think about ways to do that in the meantime. I do know that this July, they will have the South Amherst Church is celebrating their 250th anniversary. And so they are going to be holding a reading um, with some community members of the Frederick Douglass's What to the Slaves is the 4th of July on July 5th. Um, so that's going to be a pretty large event that's going to be outside on the South Amherst Common. Their indoor use will be the church if it, you know, if it rains. But it would be great to see if Munson could somehow be a participate in that. Or so it'll be a large gathering. I think last time they did it, they had about 250 people, if not more. So 
good to know. Thanks for sharing that. I I, I love the idea of, of doing something jointly. There was um, <clears throat> last July, I think, they do like a little children's parade and Mindy Dome was there and there was a reading as well. I think they read Amanda Gorman's poem um, and, you know, like ice cream and beach balls and stuff for kids. Um, yeah, that's on the, the fourth, the day before. Yeah. That goes back over a hundred years. That's been going on a long time. Mm -hmm. It's the uh, 4th of July parade. Yes, the 4th of July parade. <laughs> I've been wrangled in as a, uh, uh, a volunteer for that, uh, for the organiz organizing that. So. so we should see if there's a way that Munson can help support those yeah, efforts. I, I, I think if I, if I could double dip and, and double my efforts, yeah, that would be great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so, well it sounds like most of you guys either attend or other have attended previously or will attend this year so it would make sense i think uh, yeah i think so let's put that on the agenda for for discussion next uh when we talk on april 1st okay. maybe finally get get something off the ground that would be great And, you know, just it's, yeah, I, I feel like we've for a number of years we've talked about doing a nice little event. Um, it really would be nice. Yes. That pesky COVID thing happened and got <laughs> in the way. Well, we just we were trying to I think last time trying to create something when the Munson was going to reopen. Like, how can yeah, we do like a yeah. reopening party? But yeah. all of the efforts we were meeting these different barriers and walls, and so, yeah. And then we didn't. And then Jen left, and then I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but here we are. Yes. Energized and focused, hopefully. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. So okay. Oh, so for I, the... I, I I realize I'm the chair, so I'm like I'm when I say focused, I'm like talking to myself. I'm like reminding myself to stay focused on this. So it's not a comment on anyone else except me. So just to be clear, are we? We're still recording, aren't we? Oh great. <laughs> <laughs> Is All that right. on the agenda? I think, uh, well, we have other topics, uh, other topics the chair did not reasonably anticipate. I think we've, I've covered that. Um, is there anyone else that has any other topics? No. May I suggest we adjourn? Motion to adjourn? Or yeah, second, you were motioning. Need a time. It is 9.35 a.m. 9.35 a.m., yep. Perfect. Well, wow. this is like my first committee that we're done in less than three hours. I really appreciate that. So great. Let's see a badge of Monday. Monday morning. Everyone's just like rearing to go. <laughs> nice seeing Have everyone. Have a good week. Uh, Have a great week. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.